be present, do the work long enough to get the result. Okay, so with that being said, Mary, I'm so grateful for you sticking to the end and, and being here. She was, she was, <laughs> I'm gonna share it. She was like, she called me, she's like, hey Sam, it's at the end of the day. Do you think there's gonna be anybody left on the call? I said, absolutely, Mary, because these are a group of people who want to win. The people joining this call, they're a group of people who want to win. They're not just here for a little bit. They're here to win and they're here to hear your story because that's absolutely where uh, where they're gonna get the inspiration and the tenacity to move forward. So thank you, Mary. Um, and if anybody who knows a friend that's dropped off of this call because we were up to like 107 at points, now we're down to 85, reach back out to them, say, hey, get back on the call, okay? Um, awesome, looking forward to it, Mary. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. And um, so you got the idea that I am Sam's mom's age. In fact, I might be a little bit older than your mom. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> obviously the oldest one who is presented here today. And um, so I raised six children first. And I did little businesses here and there. did some pampered chef and, and did some summer music camps and, and various things like that. And so I had a little bit of of business experience, but my youngest one left home and and then my, uh, actually before she even left home, my husband had had some health problems and gosh, I had to just keep talking, Mary. <laughs> no, don't think. Um, and and so I, um, I started doing actually dialysis for him at home and I had to learn how to do it and uh, stick needles in him and the person you love the most in the world and sticking two big fat needles in him three times a week and watching the machine for four hours. And um, that, that was quite a bit an experience. And, and when that started, my father-in-law or when my husband's health started going down, my father-in-law started saying, Hey, you want to, you got to look at and see what William's doing. And I'll tell you the connection. Elisa's dad is my husband's brother. Okay. So that's how my kids are Elisa's cousins. And anyway, um, we, we started. So my father-in-law is the one who prospected us. It wasn't even anybody from WFG. It was my father-in-law. And, and so when we, um, and when he actually just couldn't work anymore because his health had gone down enough, we said, okay, he was still in his fifties. We're not ready to retire yet. What are we going to do? And so we said, let's just, okay, let's go ahead and look and see what William's doing. And that's William Black, who's going to be a CEO in just a few weeks. And we, uh, he showed us online, actually, he showed us online what we're doing because we were up here in Idaho and he's down in, in Provo, Utah. And when he showed us the slide that said no family left behind, it just brought up all these memories of us when we first, when we were first married and the first place we lived and the first financial advisor we had. And, and I remember my husband saying, well, how can we increase the income so we can save more for retirement? He's like, well, go get another job or something, you know, do something like that. And so um, we were always looking for another way, something else that would make the biggest difference. <clears throat> and so when we saw this, because we felt like our family had been left behind, even though my husband made good money. So, and we didn't want our family to be left behind. So I knew this was something for me. So I signed up. I thought it was going to be great because I'd done businesses before, you know, and I was really good. <laughs> I was very, very successful in other things that I had done, but I didn't know what WFG was going to be like. Because when the opportunity for success is about is small, then what it requires of you is small. And so I thought I was pretty good because I've been successful in, in small things. But when I came here and saw that the opportunity for success was huge and it required a lot, it was pretty scary. And even though, <clears throat> yeah. And so even though I had some experience. So actually when I first joined, there was an office here in Idaho Falls and I contacted the leader of that office and he said, yeah, if you wanna get mapped to me, then um, you can join my office. 
and, and we'll train you, but he was somebody who didn't recruit and that's his option, you know, his choice. And, um, and besides that, I wanted to be in my brother-in-law's team. So I basically have done the entire thing myself uh, here in Idaho Falls, no other office, and just going down to Utah as often as I can, doing most everything online, like I said earlier during the panel. So then uh, two years into it, uh, COVID happened and, but we were all, I was accustomed to, to doing things online. I had done thing, I had done taught classes online before. So I knew a little bit about Zoom. COVID ha happened. And as I said, the very first month, my husband was, got up, to the top of the list for a kidney transplant, which was great because before that, I had, he had, you know, I'd put him on to the dialysis and then I'd go make calls and, and the machine would start alarming and alarming and I'd have to, oh, uh, thank you. Um, we gotta, we gotta go now. And um, it, it was, it was pretty challenging, but it was, it was always worth it because for me, my main reason for doing it was to help families, first of all, my family, and then to help me. And I knew that there was some growth that I needed to have in my life that I hadn't had yet. And that this, this business was just gonna pull out of me. And that's what it does for you. And if you look at the business and say, oh, it's too hard, it, you know, and don't do it because of that, because it's hard or because you don't know how to do it or because people criticize you or you're afraid of what people think. And people do that all the time and they blame the business. They say, oh, it's because it's not a good business. But this is not true. This business is worth your best efforts. So I'm gonna share some, share my screen here. That's basically my story. I didn't finish with a kidney transplant. Maybe I will or won't, I don't know. But I'm gonna share my screen. I'm not the most technologically um, up to date, but here it is. Okay, so you might see, I took this picture actually, and you'll see some pictures that I have taken and everybody can see it, right? Tiff, nod your head, okay. So I, I entitled it here, there, or way beyond because you can stay here where you are. You can go over there, which I had done all my life because I always tried to, to do more in my life, or can I go way beyond what I ever thought was possible? So that's my question. As you look at this and as you do your business, where are you going? That is so important. All right. So, um, oh, I just wanted to see the whole picture without any words on it because it was a beautiful scene. Okay. So how did I get to senior marketing director? Um, I had a lot of people around me, a lot of incredible leaders who helped me. My brother-in-law helped me. Um, I had several children in the business. I had other people in the business who joined and quit. And, and um, one of my children uh, recruited somebody who was just a go-getter. And so he became my exchange leg. And, and I, uh, we worked hard, the rest of us worked hard and, and got, got to senior marketing director just last September actually. And then, then everybody quit, <laughs> all but one. There's one left and she's um, incredible. And she's going to be senior marketing director this year. I'm so excited for her. And that's Heather Jane. So anyway, um, how did I get there? Really with a lot, of, a lot of help. And you will get there in your own way. You will make it in your own way. All right. So, um, so you want to be SMD. So why? Why do you want to do that? That's the one of the first questions to answer. Because if you're just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know where I want to go or where, how am I going to get there? You're not going to get there. So you have to ask yourself, why do I want to do this? One of my big reasons was I wanted to be a good example for, for, my, for my children and grandchildren. I've got eight, almost nine grandchildren. Sam, uh, Nathan, and his wife are expecting their third <clears throat> in a couple of months. Anyway, I wanted to be a good example so that when my children, because I knew this is not an easy world to live in. And, and it's easy to give up. And when I, I knew that if I could my, be an example and my children and grandchildren could say, well, grandma didn't quit. She worked until the very last day of her life. 
to make good things for us and to be a good example for us. So then maybe they won't give up. Okay, so know your why. When do you wanna do it? Last year, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but last year I decided 2021 was the year. And I'll tell you more about that, but you need to decide when. It can't just be this nebulous goal. And how much do you want it? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? Who are you willing to become? I'm gonna, that's the next question. Well, I, okay, it can't be, it's so see this picture? I took this picture too, and the, it's not very well um, focused because sometimes we have this random idea, like this idea over here, like SMD, oh yeah, someday. I hope I can get it done. And it's not very focused, but you need to get focused and you need to get clear. And so here's a similar picture that's much more clear. You need to clarify everything. So like I said, what? You need to know the what. You want to be at SMD or whatever your current goal is. You need to know the why. And then you need to know when and, and let the how come. Let the how come, okay? So that, that is one of the most important things that I learned is, yes, I know I need this many points and this many recruits and this, many, uh, this much income and all those kinds of things, but how, how am I gonna get those things? And basically, I'll just to be really honest with you, I trusted in God to get all those things. And I also used something you've all heard of if you've been in this business for very long, and that was Napoleon Hill's six steps. I did exactly this last year. And I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it up there long enough if you want to uh, screenshot or something, but I'm not going to go through these um, because we all know what this formula is. I'm not going to go through those, but I'm going to tell you how I implemented it. I got this little notebook. It's a cute little notebook. There it is right there. And within that notebook, I had, um, I wrote down, actually I wrote down this on a different piece of paper. So I taped it into the notebook with blue tape, but I wrote down all those things and taped it into the notebook. And then there's a, it flips over because there's more on the other side. So it's basically what he says, just decide what you want, decide what you're willing to give up, make your plan. And what are you willing to do? And um, and then read it every day, every day, every morning, every night, and visualize like you can see there at the top. One of the things I, I decided was I needed to visualize all these, these things that needed to happen. I needed to visualize people coming to my team. I needed to visualize clients coming. I needed to believe in my team. And most of all, I needed to believe in myself. Excuse me. And just like Napoleon Hill says, I think this is in one of his, his books, I wrote down, my faith is so strong that it is as if this has already happened. Well, when I wrote that, my faith wasn't that strong and it hadn't already happened and I really couldn't see it, but I just did it over and over again. Now I'm gonna show you just something right here because my last number that I put in there was by July 31st. But the first one I put in there was March 31st and then I whited it out and made it April 30th. And why did that out when I didn't get it and made it July 31st? I gave myself two months more that time. And, and so, but I just kept going. I didn't get the when I originally planned, but I kept going and I kept going. And I was willing to sacrifice fear and doubt and blame, just, just like I wrote down. And then um, the other part that was really powerful for me is, I had to expect to win. I had to see myself as an SMD, not just see myself doing all those requirements, but feel like an SMD. In fact, on March 31st, I went in to, um, to talk to one of, my, one of the people on my team and I said, I'm an SMD. And she said, yay. She was so excited for me. And I said, really, I haven't achieved the, uh, the, the requirements yet but I see myself, I finally see myself as an SMD. That was my first date that I had to get to SMD. And so um, that was a really powerful thing for me, especially it was powerful that she believed me. 
when I said, I'm an SMD, and she knew that my points, she knew where my points and recruits and everything were. And so anyway, I, I had to believe that I was an SMD, that I could be an SMD. And then I did the things that it then got to the next step and to the next step. And actually it didn't, it didn't all get through until September, <coughs> but it was, um, it, it started when I actually believed that that's where I was gonna go. Okay, so <coughs> my question is, are you just filling the requirements? Are you getting the points and the recruits and the income? And those are, are important, you do need to do those things. But the more important question is, are you becoming? And that's what made the difference for me. I had to feel like I was becoming someone who was worthy to be an SMD, who did enough to be an SMD, who was the kind of leader that I that I needed to be an SMD. And just being honest, I'm not the perfect leader still. But um, <laughs> most SMDs will, will just laugh and say, yeah, SMD is just the beginning. It's the beginning. I think it's Jeff Levitan who said that um, everything he learned or did in the business was after he became SMD. So um, it, it really is the first step. And when you get there, you go, oh, why didn't I do this before? Why didn't I make this decision to do it? It's time. It's time to do it. In fact, I'm going to go back up a little bit. You know, it's time. It's time to harvest all the efforts that I've been putting in for three years and working hard and sacrificing and not being where a mother would want to be. Now, so that I could be where I wanted to be as a mother and a grandmother later. So anyway, so I'm gonna go back down here. What are you becoming? Um, and who are you becoming? That's the question to answer, ask, for, ask yourself and answer for yourself. Who are you becoming? Where are you going? Inside yourself, because that's what makes the difference. Because I knew if all I did was points and recruits, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't last. But if you become, then it will last, and then you can keep going. Okay. Um, I ask myself, am I becoming a leader? And that's a great question to ask yourself. Are you becoming a leader? And then here, here's how I got from where, here's how to get from where you are right now to where you want to go. And this is an SMD women's meeting. So I assume there's a lot of women who want to get to SMD on here, but I'm sure that there's other people who have other you, and even women who want to get to SMD want have other goals in their lives. So basically the bottom line is never quit. <laughs> I, I just, kept that in there. But here's some things also that I did. Just keep going. If you slow down, get going again. When my husband had his transplant, I, I was stuck. I'm, I live in Idaho. I was stuck in Utah for a month, over a month. I was, did not step, step foot in my house for the whole month of April in 2021. Um, so I had, to, I had to just fall back and punt for some things. So if you slow down, get going again. So I, I slowed down quite a bit because I was taking care of him full time. And if you, and, and just be grateful for every obstacle because you become stronger in every, everything that happens, you become stronger. And like I said, during the panel, you're, you're just chipping away at every obstacle. And sometimes you chip away and finally it just all falls and it's all gone. Sometimes you chip for years and it's not, and you haven't gotten through that obstacle, but you know what? You can, you can get through it. And sometimes you never get through the obstacle. You have to learn to climb over it or you have to dig and go underneath it. And, or you have to go around it or you have to ask somebody to give you a, I love to go paragliding. That's one of my goals is go paragliding, take my family paragliding in Switzerland. So, so maybe you need a friend who does paragliding to lift you up and carry you over that obstacle. But anyway, be grateful for them because you become stronger and you learn the things that you need to learn to do what you need to do because of those obstacles. So do something that you love. If um, when it gets tough, do something that you love. <laughs> you might've noticed already that I like nature and I 
have gotten into nature a lot. And sometimes it's just taking off my shoes and going walking on the grass in my yard. Sometimes it's getting away and getting into nature. Everybody has their own thing that they do, but I get into nature. Okay, and never compare yourself. Just like the women have already said, they've all always talked about, all of them today, I think have talked about, you just have to be yourself. Don't say, oh, I'm taking longer than that person took, or, oh, that person has these advantages. I've spent a lot of time doing that actually, but I'm the, the only way I made it to SMD is by just letting go of all that stuff. You are just right the way you are right now. Your life is just exactly the way it needs to be right now to be an example to those people you need to be, to attract those people to your team, attract those people as clients. I say that I'm looking right in your eyes. If you'll look at the screen and if you can see me, you and your life are just exactly right, right now for where you need to go and who you need to help and the people who are waiting for your service. So never discount that. Okay. If you didn't get anything else from this, from my presentation, please remember that. You are just right right now. Okay. Because right, what you are right now is perfect and never quit. There, never quit. Now, um, we just had St. Patrick's Day and I was thinking about uh, St. Patrick's Day. And there's a story that I think is David Meltzer, Meltzer told when he had his, his um, what do you call it? He did a podcast with Ed Milet. It was one of the first podcasts that I, re I remember seeing from Ed Milet. And, and he talked about your basket of gold. Now, every person has a basket full of gold. And he said, what he likes to do is just imagine that every day he's got this basket of gold and some days you, it's not overflowing like that one is. Some days there's just a little bit, some days you've got a lot. But he said, he imagines just going through every day and he wants to give some of this gold to people. I imagine it gold coins. I wanna give this person a gold coin. And what is that gold coin? What, what do these things represent? Well, it re represents, well, I already said this. How many coins do you have? And what will you do with them? Okay. What results can you expect? What do you have in your basket? You, it can be just a, um, it can be a smile. You may change somebody's day, literally change their life just by smiling at them when you're looking for bananas in the grocery store or when you're driving down the street and you don't cut in front of somebody <laughs> or you just say, go ahead, you go first. Or when you, um, it just text somebody who comes to your mind. It doesn't have to be somebody you're trying to recruit or somebody you're trying to prospect. Just text somebody or just call somebody and say, hey, I was thinking of you or whatever it may be. That's those gold coins. And when you give away those gold coins day after day after day, as much as you have, whatever it is, small or large, few or many, then it always comes back to you. That gold comes back to you. And it comes back in what you desire. Yes, it always comes back. In this business, it comes back as income, that kind of gold. But in other businesses or in other areas of your life, it comes back as friendships. It comes back as fulfillment. It comes back as, as um, being able to influence the people that you care about most and you do want to influence. Okay, so I'm gonna re overview, review, whatever the word is. It, and first is a goal not written is only a wish. So please take time to write it down. Are there any questions in the chat or is that just, um, okay. If there are any, I, I'll, I can't see them, <laughs> okay. So this is the review. So this is out of focus. Make sure that, that your goal is in focus because otherwise it will just be a wish. Also, oops, coming to the next slide. Get clear, get clear on what you want. Know who you are and live in alignment with that. All the women have said that. 
Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to do exactly what somebody else is doing. Sam has said that too. Know who you are and live in alignment with who you are. Know what you want. Be clear on what you want. Give 100% of whatever you have to give, which in my time here in WFG, a lot of it's been very small. And other times it's been a lot, a lot bigger. So give 100% of whatever you have to give. Be willing to become a new person. Be willing to change inside. And that's also been said a lot here today. And expect to win. Monty Holmes says that our group started in Monty Holmes' third wave. And so he spoke to us quite a bit. And he's one of the, for those of you who may not know, he's one of the founders of the business. And he's been around for many years, since the beginning, obviously. And he has talked to our team because we started out as part of his third wave. And I'm not gonna tell you that story, but because of that, he has spoken he just spoke to us Monday night, just our team. And, and he's been a great um, influencer in our team and in our family. And is, he says, expect to win. And then use your basket of gold. Remember your basket of gold and don't give up. So, whoops. Here's a little, I, I, I should have put these slides a little up higher but your basket of gold and this is what i was looking for what i thought i had up higher it can be just listening caring having integrity with your clients integrity with your team integrity with yourself so never quit and never give up listen care and be yourself so thank you awesome is that it Yes, I told you I was going to be short. I know. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being short. The, the truth is, if you look in the chats, I think there's more comments on your section than anybody else's section. So even though it was short, it was super, super impactful. So thank you. that's awesome. Thank you so much, Mary, for all of your, your wise words. I hope that everybody recognizes from, from this, it doesn't matter where you come from, what's going on in your life. Um, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, but the story I heard is you, uh, you had a rabbit and they, they, they started to take off. And as a result, you put in a little, got a little bit more focus to go SMD. Is that right? Do you wanna, do you wanna share just a little bit about that story? More, more specifically, oh, I'll, I will unmute you. Just a second. We we made it so that you can't. People have to be invited to unmute. Okay. There. Yeah, I did tell you a little bit about that. One of my uh, one of my agents uh, recruited somebody who was a rabbit. He was the the sword winner in elite circle. If you know what that is, the very first one he went to. He went SMD uh, the same day I did. And, um, but I think I got my points in about four hours before he did. So I really did before him, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, you know, sometimes that happens and I'll just tell you for me, that was a gift from God. And I consider it a gift from God because God wanted me to be SMD. And, um, so I'm not, I'm. At first, when I saw him moving so quickly, I just thought, I'm not gonna let somebody else do this for me. And then I thought, and then, then actually God said to me in my heart, he said, I gave this to you so you can get to, so you can get there. And so um, then I let go of my pride and I said, okay, I'm gonna let him push me. And, but we had to do our part, right? The rest of the team had to do our part. It's not like, one person can get me to SMD. So is that what you wanted to hear? Yeah, Sam? yeah exactly. No, I think that's important because sometimes the, the, the catalyst of growth in our business comes from something else. It comes from, hey, I've got to get my get stuff in on my side taken care of so that we can progress together. 
And that's what everybody wants. We all want to be working together as a team and focused on helping growth. Nobody was trying to trying to necessarily go senior marketing director before Mary. It was just they were doing their business at their full effort. And that full effort can inspire other people. If, if somebody comes in and they've been here for less time and they're all of that, and then they're able to surpass your efforts, then that can inspire you to take, kind of take that next step and go that do that little extra work. Find find out what's working for them that maybe you've forgotten to start doing. I know for me, it's it's the funny thing about this business. You go to a conference, you're like, oh, I learned this new thing, and then you go read your notes from like four or five years ago, and you're like, oh, they they've been telling me that for years. I guess I just <laughs> finally heard it. <laughs> you know, so nothing's really new per se uh, and that's one one of the slides i took from um uh pj was just like look we're not doing different things we're doing the same things differently we're doing them with more intention we're doing them with more focus that's it we're not doing different things it's just what is the focus and and how are you doing what you're doing okay so awesome thank